Welcome to another motion graphics tutorial. I love making these. Uh, today we're gonna make this animation right here. It's super, super fun. I had a lot of fun making it. So we're gonna have some fun with geometry nodes. We're gonna have some fun with shading and a little bit of lighting. Uh, so let's get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so let's get into this. Now this is the project file we're gonna be walking away with. And you can actually get this exact one on Patreon right now. Um, if you don't know about that, a bunch of cool stuff on there along with some new leather materials. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click, get a new blender scene. Uh, clear out everything from your current blender scene. And we're gonna go with blank, a little blank document. Shift A and let's go ahead and get a plane. And then that is gonna, where we're gonna house our geometry nodes. And let's go ahead and get a curve, shift A curve, get a circle, and I'm gonna hit G and just kind of move it out of the way. And let's make it uh, let's make it a torus. So go over here and click on this. Bring your resolution all the way up on the render and the resolution preview. And then on geometry, bring your depth to something like this. Now the reason why we're not using a torus is because we can do this. We can actually change this as we're inside of the geometry nodes editor. And then once we're done, we can apply it so we can displace it. So let's click on the uh, plane here and then let's click on the geometry nodes workspace and let's start making something cool. So uh, let's click new. I'm gonna delete the input. Shift A, we're gonna get a mesh line. Mesh line. So shift A, search. Kind of did that too quickly right up here, search. Now we're gonna have a mesh line. So let's go ahead and instance some stuff on it. So we're gonna get a instance on points. And then right here on the Bezier circle, I'm just gonna bring this up. On the Bezier circle and the outliner, just bring it in and bring this geometry into the instance. And there we go. We have something really cool. So over here, what we can do is actually bring on the Z offset, bring that in and then bring your count up to like 30. And then here on the Z location, just bring that down so that that's in the, minor, uh, the middle of the anchor point. You can hit R and just kind of rotate it. Now we're going to goof with the scale. So what we need to do is shift A and search and get a map, a map range. Plug that there and then we need to get a gradient. Gradient texture and we're gonna make this uh, spherical which is gonna create the effect, which is going to create the effect that we want where it does that. That's what the spherical does, essentially Gradient, gradient, sphere. That's if that made, if that made any sense. Uh, and what we can do is uh, with this map range, we can goof with it. You can actually get pretty creative uh, with how it looks. Uh, but what I wanted to do is kind of bring it in a little bit like that, and then on the uh, mesh line, just kind of squish it, squish it in a little bit, and then bring that up because this is the animation right here. This is how we're going to animate it. I do wanna make the Bezier circle a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna click on this in the outliner, go here, and on geometry, bring that depth higher. So now we're actually gonna go the opposite direction and make, this, make them a little bit farther apart. I don't want them to be touching yet uh, because we're gonna uh, displace this, and maybe that was too thick. Something like that. And then we can go and uh, bring them a little bit closer together. This is all totally up to your preference, uh, but just kind of center that out again. So now we have this. So now uh, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and R, rotate it. That's gonna give me a more interesting composition. Right over here, we need to get a realize instance node, and that's gonna allow us to add this modifier. So go here to the modifiers, 
add modifier, simple deform, and now we have this magic. Um, and you can go both ways. And you can make it more extreme. Um, you can really do whatever you want. Uh, but that's going to give you a little bit of character. Now the last bit of character we're going to add with modeling is some displacement. But we're going to do it with the Bezier Circle, which is up here. Uh, but the problem is there is no displacement modifier while this is still an editable curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift D and get a new curve here just in case we need to go back. And then on this one, I'm going to right click, convert to mesh. And that's going to convert that to a mesh so that now we can look over here and I'm going to click on the Bezier circle and you can rename it displacement. You can go ahead and I'm going to add modifier. Now we have all of our modifiers available to us and we're going to add a displacement. Now you can see everything displaces. I'm going to click new right over here, get our texture. Image or movie, we're gonna go here to marble. Actually, not marble, sorry. Magic, now be careful. The magic texture is kind of finicky and maybe buggy. So just be careful, don't go too bonkers with it. I'm gonna bring the depth to zero. Go back to the modifier and we need to bring this down. We can play with our uh, mid-level and our strength. And the mid-level is really gonna make this crazy. But there we go. That's uh, so far what we have. Mid-level, bring that more dramatic. So there's that. Now we do want to animate this displacement and that's going to be done. So shift A and we're going to go ahead and get a empty. And then I'm going to hit G and move this over to the area. I'm hitting G uh, to move it and move it there so that the displacement is uh, appropriate. So what's going to happen is we need to click back on this guy, go to the modifiers. I mean, click on the, the uh, displacement, go to the modifiers, and uh, on local, go to object, object, and get that empty. So what happens is if you click on the empty in the outliner and hit R twice to rotate, it animates, moves around, does some fun stuff. So we're going to go ahead and animate this. So I'm going to click on our object here and then click on the geometry nodes modifier. And let's go ahead and animate this Z. So bring this down a little bit because we need a timeline. Bring the timeline up and get that timeline. Now, I know there's a lot of math that you can do to make sure that this loop is going to be correct. Um, I'm gonna give myself 10 frames, but I'm going to make sure this loops uh, visually rather than mathematically. And that's just how I am. I don't do a lot of math within Blender. If you've seen my channel for a long time, I almost never use math nodes. So to make sure this animates correctly, we're gonna do it visually, and in this case, it's relatively easy. So right here in the Z is the animation, but notice you can see when they kind of bounce down. See how it's not like a fluid, smooth motion? And so there's a spot right there where you can actually make sure that this is animating, which is essentially the highest point that it comes out. And that's where we can hit our keyframe. So go to your edit and your preferences and make sure your default interpolation is linear here in the animation tab. Otherwise, it's going to go have a smooth beginning and end, so it won't loop. So again, let's make sure we're right at that, that high peak. And my cat is on my arm, so it's being, it's, it's, uh, being a little difficult. Uh, but I'm holding down Shift. If you hold down Shift, you get a, a much more controlled motion. So for me, I'm going to start at negative 0.88. I'm going to hit I, and then go to the end on frame 10. Make sure you have 10 frames, and just go 1. Now hold down Shift, and that's going to give you a controlled motion. And then right there. I think that's it. Perfect. Okay, so that's it. So for me, I started at negative 0.88 and I ended at negative 0.77. That, that kind of makes sense uh, mathematically. So I guess there's the math. Um, so there you go. Again, not super savvy in that range of the math stuff, but I, we, we looped it visually. So that's 10 frames. Now we are going to be presented with a problem when we want to animate our displacement, which is we need to do that over a lot more frames than 10 frames. So what I, for my animation, I gave myself 320 frames. Of course, this animation is going to stop at 10 frames. So if I press play, boom, it stops. How do we fix that? There's a very easy fix to this. So right over here, I'm just going to drag this over. Now make sure this model is clicked and this mesh line node is clicked. We're going to click on this button right here and we're going to go to the graph editor and we're going to add, we're going to hit the N, go to the modifiers. Now I'm going to hit this drop down here and go to the Z. 
because that's what we animated, the Z right here. On modifiers, add cycles, and that is going to loop that 10 frame animation quite literally infinitely. So you add 3,000 frames, it's gonna loop this 3,000 frames long. And since we ended it in a, in a set of 10, like 320, 310, 300, whatever, it will loop. So if we go to the end, it's a seamless animation. So you can take a 10 frame animation and literally scoot it all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and kill that uh, window here. And then let's go ahead and animate the displacement. I'm gonna go back to the layout so we can see everything. And uh, let's go ahead and animate the empty here. So click on the empty and click on this. And I'm gonna animate the Z. So I'm gonna go back to frame zero, hit the back arrow and go to the frame zero. Click that, go to the end and type in 720. That's two rotations instead of one, which would be 360. Click that and now our animation is doing its thing. Um, it's hard to see it, really, if you wanna go more. 720, let's do 1080, which would be more than that. I can't remember exactly how many frames that is. And now we have a pretty cool displacement animation. Um, and you can even make that displacement more strong if you want, it was a lot more strong in my original animation. So now we can go ahead and start making this scene look awesome with some lighting and some shading. So let's create our lighting. So I'm gonna click front, I'm gonna hit the tilde key and click front, shift A, and we're gonna go ahead and get a plane. I'm gonna hit R, X, nine, zero. That's gonna do that. I'm gonna hit S and scale this just really big and bring it back. And this is our background. I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the front. Let's get a camera. So shift A, camera. And then we can just get that green arrow and bring it back. So hitting uh, zero, I'm hit G and go back a little bit more. And I'm gonna click on that camera right up here go to the camera settings, and we're gonna to go to 85 millimeter, and that's gonna give you a more flat view. And of course, if it was any closer or farther back, hit G, middle click, and you can zoom in and out. So let's go ahead and start lighting this scene. So we're gonna go here. I'm gonna be using cycles for this, but you can use EV if you'd like. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift A, go to the light, and click an area light, and I'm gonna to go to the, the cycles view. And then I'm gonna hit G and just move it over here, just like that. And then in the light settings, I'm gonna go to a disc. I'm gonna hit R twice. And then I'm gonna bring my power up. I'm gonna go back to the camera view here. So I'm bringing that power up and then you can bring that spread down so that it's not hitting, oops. So it's not hitting that background. So if you bring that spread down just a little bit, but once we add the light to the background, it really won't affect it. So now that we have that, I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the top, and I'm gonna hit Alt D, which is gonna make a instance of that light. So whatever changes we make to this light, that change will happen to this light as well. And the reason why we wanna do that is so we can have this big dark abyss, essentially right here, to create some really interesting contrast. Now I'm gonna go back to the top and I'm gonna click on both of these lights and bring them back because uh, I want them to be a little bit more of a key light than they are now. All right, cool. So we want this dark section and then the light hitting it there. Next thing we're going to do is I'm gonna take one of these lights. I'm gonna hit Shift D, which is gonna create uh, not an instance. It's an individual light by itself. Hitting G to just kind of move it around. And then I'm gonna hit, hit R twice to rotate it so it hits our, our background. So that's what we're gonna attack next. So bring that spread in like this. And then right over here, I wanna scale it to the right. I wanna, and then right over here, we hit this red thing and we're gonna scale it out. And then you can actually rotate that yellow thing. Cool. And then I'm gonna I'm scale it out. Actually, I'm just gonna bring that spread larger and then hit the R button twice to get a nice gradient here at the top. And then what I'm noticing now is this background is probably too bright. 300 on the brightness there. And then on these guys, I'm gonna give it maybe 800 so that this kind of shines. And then what I'm gonna do is on this background, get a new material 
and do something like that. It's a little too green for me. Cool. Just like that. And we have this nice color applied to that. Now we can go ahead and start shading this material here. What I want to do is click on the base color, go in the hex, and just hit Control C and copy that. We're going to apply that to the shading. So click on the shading button. And now we have this guy. I'm going to click on this, click New, and let's title it. I'm going to call it Guy. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, because we're using geometry nodes, we make, need to make sure we're not skipping this one step. Go back to geometry nodes, shift a search, set material, plug it there and click guy, oops, guy. Then we can go back to shading and start making this material. So we need two principled nodes. So bring this guy over here and hit shift D, shift a search, mix shader, plug him there and then click on the base color and paste that hex in. So now we just have that color. Now I'm gonna bring this shader to the right, the mix shader to the right, bring my roughness almost all the way down and then bring your transmission up. Now we have a glass material, these two right here, and we're gonna mix them together with a gradient. So let's go ahead and get a color ramp, plug that here, and then we're gonna go ahead and get, then, uh, get an A gradient texture with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, hit Control T, or just get a mapping and a texture coordinate and use the object coordinate. So, and, uh, and plug the color here. So now what we're gonna do is, uh, let's notice here, it just kind of cuts in half. And we want two, we want glass, glass, material. So the way you do that is go ahead and hit the plus icon here. And so what we're gonna do is make these two here, black, and the one in the middle, white. And so now we have this creation. You can notice right here, it's doing that. So if we bring these in, see how you have that just glass line. So what we're going to do is we're going to move around our uh, mapping node. So the X location, just kind of bring it here. And on the Y rotation, bring it 90 degrees. And then you can bring these color ramps back here. And then you can play with that location again, rotation, now we have glass in the middle and uh, the blue on the sides. I want the opposite. So we're gonna bring in a fun little node called invert, or you can just flip color ramp, but I'm gonna use the invert node because that's fun. And so now you can bring it in like that. And if I go here to cycles, we can see glass material, super nice, looks really good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make these two lights a little bigger. like that, and that's gonna kinda of help out our lighting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit the render button and see how this looks. All right, so this is what we're working with. Looks really awesome, looks really nice, and we're pretty much done. If I press play, and there we have it, we have our animation all done. Looks really good in cycles, and we can go ahead and export this. So what you can do is go ahead and pick, um, my bounces are at five. My render, I'm gonna put my, my uh, Samples at 800, that's a little bit much. Um, if you have a smaller computer, you can use EV or just uh, use slower, uh, or you can go ahead and denoise with lower sample count. And then here, uh, go ahead and pick a file for your PNG sequence. If you don't wanna do a PNG sequence, go ahead, go to FFmpeg video, encoding, MP4, and then go here to perceptually lossless, and go to render, render animation. And when you're done, you're gonna have a really cool animation. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I know this one was a lot, but there's so many moving pieces with this. It's just so many interesting things you can apply to other animations. Um, but that being said, that's it. Uh, don't forget to check out Real Time Materials and I will see you in the next tutorial.